I'd like to call this meeting of the New Hanover County Board of Education to order. If you would, let's all please stand for the invocation, posting of colors, and the national anthem. Lord, we thank you for this day, this opportunity to come together. We appreciate all the blessings that we all enjoy. Provide us wisdom and guidance, and may all that takes place here tonight be pleasing in your sight. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Everyone may be seated. At this time, where is the microphone? On the senior staff table, I think. Oh, okay. If we would, if our JROTC cadets, if they would introduce themselves, what school you're from, what rank you are, and what grade you're in, please, then we'll hear from our singers. Um, I'm Cadet Bradley. I'm Cadet Bradley. I am a sophomore at Ashley High School. I am a PO2. And what else? <laughs> My name is Cadet Olson. I'm a sophomore at Ashley High School, and I'm a Cadet Petty Officer second class. I'm Cadet Wilson. I'm a junior, and I am a Cadet Petty Officer first class. I'm Cadet Burns, and I'm a Petty Officer, Cadet Petty Officer, second class. And also, their instructors are here tonight. Chief Warrant Officer Stanley Holland, Chief, glad to have you with us tonight. And uh, Chief Petty Officer Thomas Frost, glad to have you all with us here tonight. I don't know if Principal Norvell is here, but uh, Mr. Jackson Norvell is the principal of Cadet at Ashley. We appreciate you all being here tonight. And I know you want to give the cadets a round of applause. <laughs> I'm Benjamin Harrell, choral teacher at Hoggard High School. This is a group of volunteers from Hoggard Voyagers. Um, they're all members of that class. That class is about three times the size, so they volunteered to come out this evening and sing for you. I'm Madeline Lillick. I'm a junior. I'm Michaela Shifter. I'm a junior. I'm Kristen Isbell. I'm a junior. I'm Rachel Zachary. I'm a junior. I'm Stephen Reich. I'm a sophomore. I'm Tanner Richards. I'm a sophomore. 
I'm Jake Macklin. I'm a sophomore. I'm Lane Pierce, and I'm a senior. I'm Shadrach Wilson, and I am a senior. I am Lonnie Sims, and I'm a senior. I'm Bradley Barefoot, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, I'm Helena Boldazar, and I'm a junior. I'm Julia Goey, and I'm a senior. I'm Summer Blades, and I'm a senior. I'm Gabby Metzger, and I'm a junior. Thank you very much. I know the principal of Hoggard High School. I see him waving there, Dr. Sullivan. Glad to have you with us. Appreciate you all coming over tonight. Appreciate the volunteers. I could relate to the young lady as a senior. I, when I was first asked if I was a senior the first time, I had, you know, I couldn't believe it either. So, uh, <laughs> okay. Um, at this time, Ms. Adams, would you call the roll, please? Donald S. Hayes. Here. Jeanette S. Nichols. Here. Here. Tammy J. Coble. Here. Lisa Easta. Here. Derek G. Hickey. Here. Edward B. Higgins. Here. Thank you. Item two, uh, approval of the agenda. Any changes or deletions, Dr. Markley? I'll have one little brief announcement when we get to the superintendent's report on uh, SAT numbers that just came in today, okay. but no change to the agenda. Okay. Motion to approve the agenda. So so second. 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 All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? It's approved. Uh, item three, approval of the minutes. Our, uh, item A, our regular meeting on August the 6th, uh, 2013. Uh, no objection, we'll do them both at the same time. Also, item B, our work session on August the 20th, 2013. Motion to approve those? So moved. Second. Comments, questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? They're approved. Item four, recognition of achievement. Good afternoon, everyone. For our first recognition, we would like to recognize Mrs. Sandra Sazelski. Mrs. Sazelski has been named the Outstanding Environmental Educator by the North Carolina Coastal Federation. Mrs. Sazelski is, Marine, is a Marine Science Academy instructor and coordinator at <laughs> Ashley High School. She was recently selected to be a part of the highly prestigious MORI Project, which is an oceanography program supported by the American Meteorological Society and the U.S. Naval Academy. If Mrs. Sazelski is here, would you please come forward so we can recognize you for being the outstanding environmental educator. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I am deeply honored to be here tonight. I stand before you this evening as a typical North Carolina public school teacher. Last week began my 29th year in the classroom, mostly in New Hanover County. I never tire of the enthusiasm and energy of teenagers. They inspire me and keep me going. The achievements that I have been recognized for this evening have been made possible due to past support from the state. The state of North Carolina paid the fees for my National Board Teaching Certification. As a result, my lessons became more student-centered and content-rich. The state also provided financial incentives for me to attend UNCW in order to obtain a Master's of Science education. The pedagogical growth, content knowledge, technological expertise, and professional relationships I developed by way of these opportunities provided me with the confidence to move forward when asked to take a leadership role in developing an innovative program. On February 5th of this year, the New Hanover County School Board showed extraordinary vision in voting to support the creation of the Marine Science Academy. I was asked to lead the academy and strive to create a world-class program that other school systems across our country will seek to emulate. The Academy's aim is for some of our best students to engage in college-level ocean science and for them to explore career opportunities by working with some of the most talented marine scientists in America. 
I appreciate your confidence in my professional ability to lead the Marine Science Academy. I can fulfill this position only by way of the state-supported professional growth I was able to participate in. I encourage you to push for changes within our state so that teachers in our county have the same opportunities for professional growth and advancement that I have had. State support is essential in order to enable our teachers to obtain the excellence they strive so hard to achieve for themselves, for our schools, and for our children. I am a good teacher, and I, I am completely dedicated to the success of my students. I can't thank you enough for this feel-good moment because, as you know, North Carolina teachers have had far too many of those lately. Thank you. Our next recognition award goes to Chaz Whited. Chaz is a senior at Ashley High School. Chaz was recently welcomed to our capital in Washington, D.C. by Congressman Mike McIntyre for winning the 2013 7th District Congressional Arts Competition. Chaz's self-portrait is entitled Feeling Blue, and it will hang in the U.S. Capitol for one year. This is quite an honor for one of our students. So it's my honor at this time to recognize this talented young artist for winning the district's Congressional Art Competition. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to recognize Chaz's parents and grandparents if they're here. And if you are, would you please stand? They are Mr. Terry Whited and Ms. Nancy Davis, Dr. and Mrs. Haywood Davis, and as well as Chaz's art teacher from Ashley, Mrs. Angela Hewitt. If you're here, would you please stand? Congratulations. And if Chaz would please come forward. This is our national art contest winner, Chaz White. And finally, the board will recognize our educators of the year. When I call you up, if you would please stay up here because there will be some additional gifts for you. So we'll start with our principal of the year, who is Ms. Jackie Jethro, the principal of Sunset Park Elementary School. Ms. Jethro, would you please come up to be recognized as principal of the year by the board? Next, we will recognize Ms. Melissa Gillespie from Laney High School, who is the high school teacher of the year. Ms. Gillespie was also selected as New Hanover County Schools Teacher of the Year overall, and she will go on to represent our county in the regional and possibly the state competitions. Ms. Melissa Gillespie. Next, it's my privilege to recognize Ms. Christy Harper from Winter Park Elementary as the Elementary School Teacher of the Year. Ms. Harper, if you would please come forward. <laughs> and last but not least, we need to recognize Ms. Lisa Doyle, who is from Williston Middle School, and Ms. Doyle is the Middle School Teacher of the Year. Ms. Doyle, would you please come forward? <laughs> As I turn it over to Dr. Markley, ladies and gentlemen, these are your Educators of the Year. Congratulations. All right, from the district, we, a couple of things are going to happen. First of all, we want to thank you and we recognize your teachers for your, that to do what you do requires ongoing professional development. So I'm going to ask John to come forward and present each of you with a certificate for one free professional development course during this year. Oh, wow. 
get to work for. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> so as your prize. <laughs> and you said, you said you were going to get gifts. <laughs> well, that's the, that's the next part of this. I hope there's some more coming. <laughs> At the Teacher of the Year banquet at the end of the year, they received s some gifts, but uh, one of our local sponsors and vendors, Staples, has provided a bag of supplies for each of you to take with you when you leave tonight. And that's what Dr. Wellmans is bringing forward tonight. So Don, I'll ask if you present each one of them with uh, their bag. Are they all the same? All the same. <laughs> So we gave you coursework and paper for Yes. So let me say one more time, thank you ladies for the work that you do. I've been in their schools and their classrooms and these are some of the finest educators we have in our county and it is a pleasure to work with you ladies. Thanks to Staples for providing the additional gifts and it was an honor to bring, be able to bring you back at the start of the year so folks knew who you were. Yes, there was a car. There's a story with a car but we won't tell that story tonight. <laughs> but. Uh, Thank you again. Don, anything you want to? <laughs> Ladies, thank you. I was kidding when I said thank you. <laughs> Dr. Markley. Dr. Markley. Doesn't, aren't there handbags saying Office Depot instead of Staples? No, it was Staples. They said Office Depot on the bag, I'm wondering. <laughs> Maybe we should cover all bases, Office Thank you, Depot and Staples. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that's the, Staples owes us a bag as well now. They got free advertisement. Thank you, John. You said from Staples. Staples. <laughs> the bag said Office Depot? Yeah. I didn't notice that. <laughs> Staples was very supportive too, but Office Depot gave us a bag. Maybe Staples next year. <laughs> 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 okay, next item on the agenda is our call to the audience. Uh, we've had one uh, individual sign up, uh, Dr. Debbie Powell. She signed up online, so. But she realized she speaks in person, though. <laughs> Dr. Debbie Powell. Okay, it was all right. That was the only individual we had to uh, sign up to speak. Uh, next item, item six, uh, administrative personnel, Dr. Uh, item A, Dr. Markley. We have one recommendation tonight. Um, Linda Bullard, who uh, you all know has with been with us for a long time, retired from purchasing. Mr. Hans and his uh, letter team that did interviews last week for to replace Ms. Bullard as a purchasing director, and they are recommending Kevin Lee. Mr. Lee is currently the accounting supervisor in the finance department. Prior to joining the Hanover County in 2007, he was the executive director for the Carousel Center and for the New Hanover, Re New Hanover Regional Medical Center Foundation. Mr. Lee also served as the foundation's accountant and internal auditor for the, region for the New Hanover Regional Medical Center and UNCW. He received his Bachelor of Science in Accounting and his CPA from UNCW uh, Cameron School of Business. So it's my pleasure to recommend Mr. Kevin Lee for the position of Director of Purchasing. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments, questions? Uh, only question Dr. I have is what, uh, what's the salary for this position? The director level salary, uh, it's um, approximately, I don't know the exact amount, but it's <coughs> Any other questions? I can get you the exact number. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Approved. Mr. Mr. Lee is here tonight, and I'd ask him to stand and be recognized. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Next item, item seven, uh, under for informational purposes, uh, policies on for a first reading, Mrs. Nichols. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There are three policies for first reading, but however, the first two I'm going to ask for your consideration to waive them so that we can get them in place. The first one is a new policy, school volunteers, and if you look at the last paragraph, we're going to insert the word designee after it says the superintendent 
or designee shall generate procedures. And I'm going to ask Dr. Wilmers if he will go through the information for us. Thank you, Ms. Nichols. Um, this is a new policy. We, you know, we've had uh, quite a bit of talk about uh, school volunteers and the procedures and process that we want to use when we use school volunteers uh, in the schools and we're very lucky to have a lot of folks that, that do volunteer their time with us and help us in the schools. This policy is basically the philosophy of how we're going to work with those volunteers. We've also established some procedures and guidelines of how the individual schools will be doing that. But this is this basically defines what a school volunteer is and the way in which we expect them to work in the schools and, and to give us that time in and a way to, to regulate each school and what they're doing with the school volunteers. It also assures that school volunteers will not be uh, in areas within the schools or privy to uh, confidential student or personnel information and it establish a standard for that that all the principals can follow. Thank you. So Mr. Chair, I'm asking that we waive first reading for this new policy and adopt it tonight. This is uh, six. Uh, it has a no number. Okay. Do we have to have a motion to yes. waive it and then the yeah. motion yes. to yes. pass yes. it? Yeah, motion. Uh, we'll entertain a motion. There's no. Okay, new. I was at the wrong spot. Uh, motion to waive the uh, uh, first, reading. First. first reading and go ahead and approve it tonight. So moved. Second. Comments, questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, now. Uh, the policy itself is the school volunteer policy with the changes because I was looking something. Up. The one change to insert the word or designee at the last paragraph. Okay. Yeah, as, as amended. amended. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Any comments, questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. It is approved. Thank, Thank you. you. The next policy, 16. 50 is on recognition of accomplishments and this is a board of education um, recognition and I've asked I'm asking too that we waive this one because this is basically already in practice with our recognition of heroes so with the last paragraph inserted I ask that we waive this first reading and approve it tonight which Six, are we talking about? Recognition of accomplishments. 1650. 1650. We've been asked to waive first reading. Is there a motion to waive first reading? So moved. Second. Comments, questions? Yeah, I, you know, I mean, I understand what, what Ms. Nichols is saying, but I mean, you know, it's, and I understand about the volunteers. That's something we need to go ahead and get in place. But I mean, if, if you know, I don't want to make a habit of waiving first readings, and I just, I, I think unless there's really an overwhelming need to do it, there's no reason not to just follow the normal procedure, the have only, it presented now, and then we vote on it at the next meeting. The only reason I asked was because we basically are already doing this. Well, and that, uh, it, you know, that may be, but... Uh, uh, it will be fine to do uh, just, I, I just I, I don't want to set a bad precedent that you know every time somebody oh, says I understand that yeah it would be fine if we delay it until October that would just simply be my argument okay. well, we had a motion in the second correct yeah mm -hmm. <clears throat> would someone like to withdraw the motion or you go ahead and vote on it all right all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. opposed no okay so we'll waive the uh, first reading uh, anything else about the policies you want to say, Ms. Smith? No, no, the okay. committee went through it very carefully. Okay, so now to approve policy 1650, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, it is approved, thank you. And the last one uh, is uh, code, uh, employee code of ethics and standards of contact conduct, I'm sorry, um, 6082, and Dr. Wilmers will present this one for us. Thank you. This is um, an additional, um, uh, both in adding the employee to the title and then um, uh, strengthening the policy under the guidelines, part of it being that we're addressing almost like a whistleblower type of situation 
where uh, uh, a supervisor cannot directly or indirectly use threat or force or any other means to stop an employee for, from uh, sharing information where someone might have violated a law, a policy, or a procedure. So it addresses that. It also addresses a change in that uh, uh, if an employee violates this policy, what steps or what actions would we do, which includes the investigation of the employee and any other further disciplinary or actions that we would take with the employee. So it adds that to the policy. And this will be online for input from uh, the community. And those are the three for first reading. Thank you. Any questions that board members might have, contact Mrs. Nichols or Mrs. Coble or Ms. East the policy committee or uh, Dr. Wilmers prior to the next meeting, anything that uh, you know you would like to discuss or, or bring forward. Okay, next item uh, on the agenda, item eight, superintendent's report, item A, strategic plan update, Dr. Markley. Uh, before I give that, uh, real quick, we, Dr. Holiday brought to me today the SAT scores that literally just came in this afternoon. Uh, and pleased to announce as we're looking at uh, SAT results in the area of reading, we went from 503 last year to 516 as our score this year in reading, which places us above the North Carolina average of 495 and above the state, the, the national average of 496. That's a 13 point increase. That's a pretty significant increase in the SAT score on the uh, reading. Well, let's, let's pause for a moment there and give our teachers <laughs> and everybody. into that and we appreciate it in the area of math we went from a 522 last year to a 527 this year which places us again above the North Carolina and the national average once again <laughs> and our biggest jump in an area that we've struggled with a little bit on SAT is in the area of writing we went from a 477 last year to a 495 this wow. year that's an 18 point jump. That's a credit to our teachers out there. That's right. Well above the state average and the national average. When you look at the number of test takers, it's the same number of test takers as last year. So it's not a case of we took, we had fewer test takers. We were then six of the number we had last year. So commend the teachers. We'll get a breakdown by school later in the week, but this just came in this afternoon. And then every once in a while, you get an opportunity to share good news. So you take how, how many how many people do we have taken? Because I think that's, that's something that people do not often recognize as they look at, you know, let's say a school, a, a state, a state like North Dakota or someplace, and they have 325 people take it, and we have what 4,000, 3,000? No, we have we, we graduate 3,000. Huh? This is based on the senior classes okay. SAT score. So we had about a thousand seniors who took the S, who are in this data. And so just about, which just us, right? Because of some states. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we saw when you look at look, just real cursory look at some of our, our subgroups, our African American uh, students went up, and uh, some of our other larger subgroups went up as well. And we'll, we'll break this all down for you and get a full breakdown. But I wanted to share the, the, at least those preliminary numbers with you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Second item on the superintendent's report is strategic plan update. We had talked at our retreat about revising our strategic plan. Uh, I sent you copies of the two proposals we had. I went with local companies because I thought they could provide the, uh, the, good, the best service. You saw a proposal from uh, Karen Dash and her consulting group and from Mr. Gerlach who did our previous, uh, our previous strategic plan. So what I'm looking for, are there any follow-up questions that I need to take back to them uh, prior to moving forward with this? Because if you look at the cost, the costs are similar to each other, and so uh, at some point we're going to have to break, figure, uh, make a decision as to which one we would uh, like to use moving forward. Any comments from? Well, this is not something we're voting on today. Yeah. No, no, I just wanted to know if there were additional questions yeah. that you guys had because I sent it to you I think last week in the as, as part of the, the the regular packet, and then it was, went online today as well. I just appreciate that we're going locally so that when we do have the planning that we're all able to attend the meetings and work through it in a productive manner. Well, this will be on the October board session as a, as a, to, to uh, pick one of these. 
And if you have questions, please let me know prior to then, because I will make a recommendation at the October meeting as to which one of these that, uh, that we go with. But if there are questions, let me know, and I'll follow back up with them and try to get more specific answers. Would we be providing a recorder, a scribe? Would, uh, did we do that last time? Because there's a price difference for, with Rob Gerlach if we do. I wasn't, I wasn't here part of the initial part. Did, they, did we provide the scribe, or did they provide the scribe? Did you? I'm trying to think. I yeah. think. <laughs> He wrote everything up. He wrote everything up. He wrote everything up. But but I think the um, Lisa Burris also. She was, was scribe. She was. That's right. She was. She, she was a scribe, I believe. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You're right. I'm sorry. She was. So and that would be the decision that you'd have to make in terms of which one you want to go with. But all right. Okay. Any other things on item A? That's it. Item B, Forest Hills Global Elementary School International Baccalaureate Program, Appendix D, Dr. Markley. I'm going to ask the folks from Forest Hills to come forward, and I'll ask the principal, Deb Greenwood, to introduce who she has with her. Now, as you know, Forest Hills runs our immersion program, uh, but they're looking to sort of marry that up with a very interesting international baccalaureate program. They visited a school in Jacksonville that has a IB and uh, dual immersion program, and I won't steal any thunder, so I'll turn it over to Ms. Deb Greenwood, the principal. Um, good evening. My name is Deb Greenwood, and this is Dolores Overby. Sorry. And we're proud, very proud to be the administrative team at Forest Hills. Um, we are lucky each and every day that we have that privilege. So, on behalf of our entire school community and our staff, we would like to thank you for this opportunity to come forward and share our, our vision for Forest Hills. Um, and just so that you all recognize, if you're from Forest Hills, could you just stand up? Uh -oh. And at Forest Hills, we believe that <laughs> we believe at Forest Hills that we have the power, and I think you see that tonight. Thanks. Tonight, our goal is um, to provide you an overview of IB and to show you why we believe it's the next step for Forest Hills as we continue our journey to ensure that all of our students at, at Forest Hills have the opportunity to learn and excel at the highest level. Please note that tonight you're going to see lots of us share information. None of us are gurus and none of us are experts, but indeed I think what you're seeing for in front of you tonight and what you'll see throughout the course of the year is a true community of learners because we are all learning about IB and how it will help our Forest Hill staff. We're all learning together. Let me give you a little bit of background though. Last year, November 7th, 2012 to be exact, the Forest Hill staff met and started discussing about what we could find, what frame we could find to kind of blend our immersion program and our non-immersion program together into one, unit, one unified school that we now lovingly refer to as one Forest Hills. As you know or may know, Forest Hills houses an immer a Spanish immersion program. And in kindergarten and in first grade, our immersion program, our to students are totally immersed in foreign language Spanish from the moment they come in the door to the time they leave, it, with the exception of art, music, PE, and of course when the building principal goes in or the AP goes in, we don't speak Spanish, so we're the, we're the English relief. The other part of our kindergarten and first grade sections are taught in a, a non-immersion, so they're taught in English. In second and third grade this year, and eventually through fourth and fifth grade, then we move to what we have a 50-50 model. So the kids have an A-B day. One day it's all taught in English. The next day the concepts are reinforced in Spanish. So it's getting the kids, it gives the kids a little bit more rigor and moving towards, um, of course, the EOG and, and preparing them for middle school. So our immersion program and our non-immersion program are different, and yet we wanted to blend them together into one school. So Mrs. Overby is now going to present an essential component that we truly and highly value at Forest Hills. Thank you, board. At Forest Hills, we believe it is important for the staff and parents to work collaboratively for the greater good of our students, school, and community. We believe the IB framework will allow us to take Forest Hills down this rigorous path of academic and personal growth. In tonight's presentation, you will see the vision we all share. I present to you now a very involved parent in the <coughs> learning community, Mrs. Stephanie David.
Good evening. I, um, we've said IB so many times. It's an international baccalaureate program, and I understand you have an Appendix D. I don't know what that is. Um, it might be something similar to this that we sent over to you to read about, and so I don't want to be redundant if you've read or heard or understand IB programs. I work at UNCW and we're very involved in high schools that work with IB <coughs> programs, but um, the idea of elementaries and middle schools sort of getting into this game is pretty exciting and we are uniquely positioned as Forest Hills to sort of um, embrace the IB framework. The bullet points are obvious. Um, I think one of the neat things, I was a parent who got to visit a school in Jacksonville that's become an IB elementary. And one of the things that was striking, and there's some moms here that were there with me, um, it's very rigorous, but the kids are very excited and enthusiastic. And I think, when it, I'm not an educator, but I think one of the neat things that I hope my girls and then my son when he's finally at Forest Hills embrace is their education and owning part of it themselves. And I think this naturally helps children do that. It's problem solving education, it's 21st century, it's units of inquiry where you're not just spending your time on math, but every bit of your um, academic life is sort of all up in rocks and minerals for whatever that unit of inquiry might be, which they shared with us um, in Jacksonville. Service learning is a huge component and I think that's important um, for any student at any stage of life. I think it's important for all of us at any stage of life. But I think as you um, learn more about it and learn with us, you'll find that Forest Hills really is your elementary that's uniquely positioned to take on the two key components of IB, which are in, in a language program as well as um, a service learning component. Thanks for even being interested in learning more. Good evening. My name is Anna Valle Green, and I teach first grade in the immersion program at Forest Hills. As Ms. David mentioned, a language component is very important uh, in IB, and we already have that well established. Um, we are in our fourth year of Spanish immersion, which means that our first group of students who began in kindergarten are now in third grade, and we know all eyes will be on them. Um, we have 129 students in immersion. As Ms. Greenwood mentioned, in kindergarten and first grade in my class, they only hear Spanish. So if I speak Spanish, just bear with me and I'll switch back to English. <laughs> the goal is for them to speak, read, and write in Spanish at the same level that we expect our students to do so in English. Um, and they are doing very well in that area. Because of our success, we are adding Spanish exploration this year. All students will receive some instruction in Spanish, our immersion students as well as our students who are not in immersion. They will do the, that mostly through our Spanish itinerant that we have added this year, and that teacher will provide enrichment to the students who are in immersion. This will serve to further unify our school and to provide more opportunities for all our students to become global learners. Thank you. Next, we have Erin Rady, who is our AIG uh, specialist. Good evening. Forest Hills visited two schools that had, were IB. The first visit was to Farmington Woods Elementary School in Cary, North Carolina, in the Wake County public school system. A team of teachers went with the intent to gather information about the IB program and to see it in action. While visiting the schools, teachers saw similar practices to what Forest Hills was already and or in the process of implementing. Daily, the Daily Five Literacy Framework, Immersion Program, Spanish Exploration, Vertical and Horizontal Curriculum Alignment. The next two visits were to Clyde Irwin Elementary School in Jacksonville, North Carolina in the Onslow County Public School System. Two teams of teachers, parents, and administrators attended these visits in which again similar practices to what were already being implemented at Forest Hills were seen. The administrators, staff, and school community believe that by adopting the IB program, Forest Hills will be able to provide academic and personal rigor for all students. The IB program empowers students to take ownership of their learning by allowing them to have an active voice instead of teacher-centered learning. The IB program would bring to Forest Hills the students opportunities to experience inquiry and problem-based learning centered on six interdisciplinary themes. Who we are, where we are in place and time, how we express ourselves, how the world works, how we organize ourselves, and sharing the planet. 
These six interdisciplinary plenary themes will allow for students to delve into the curriculum having an active voice, which is reflected in the common core in brain research. Do you have any questions for us? I do. What determines whether a child is or is not in the immersion program? It's parents' choice. So the parent can opt in um, during kindergarten, and we have opened it up. Um, we've um, had some students that we've added in first grade, but our goal is to en enroll the students in kindergarten, um, and then we do have an opportunity to test in if you're in our attendance area um, for first, second, or third grade. But it is the parent's choice. Any other questions? Let me simply say, I have long been an advocate of the International Baccalaureate Program. I think uh, Ms. Del Pelsey Becton will tell you that every time I have come back from a National School Board Association and my packet of material, there's always something in there about the International Baccalaureate. And so I, I think this, and I was also exposed to something called the uh, Cambridge Program, which is a similar uh, program from Cambridge University in, in England. Uh, but I think making these kinds of steps in a global world is going to be essential. Thanks. Any other questions? Any other questions from any board members? Well, we certainly appreciate you being here tonight. And and we and want to offer you the opportunity if there's a board member who'd like to join us on this journey. Again, by no means are we gurus. We are learning. And if somebody would like to learn alongside with us, please let us know. Um, our steering committee is meeting. Um, and we'll be, on, uh, we'll be moving along this year. We are not going to start the official IB process. We're going to use this year to train, um, to train our staff, to train administrators, to um, train our parents. And then next year, hopefully, we'll be poised to move forward in the, in the rigor of the IB process. And thank you again for this opportunity. Thank you for being here, and thank you for the support that you have here tonight. We appreciate you being here. They're an amazing community. If you can provide us the dates of your steering committee meetings, that would be great. If okay. you could forward those on to us, because I would like to, yeah. to come if I can. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. There's so much positive here. We started with the SAT scores, how positive that is, and now mm -hmm. what's going on at Forest Hills is so positive. So we'll continue that with item C, the DC Virgo Pre Pre I can say the word, preparatory <laughs> <laughs> academy update, Appendix E, Dr. Markley. All right, we are finishing up our first year at Virgo and beginning our second year under the uh, leadership of Mr. Arizari. Uh, we don't have test results in, but there's a lot of data that talks about the positive direction we're going. I'm going to ask the principal to come forward and just talk about the, what's happened that first year, some of the positives, the, some of the growing pains, things they discovered, and what they're doing heading into their second year. Thank you, sir, and thank you, board. Uh, I'm excited. A lot of great things are happening in the county, so uh, that sounds exciting over there at Forest Hills. Um, we're moving into our second year DC Virgo, believe it or not. Um, this year, or last year, was an exciting year. Had a lot of growing pains, like Dr. Markley said, but overall, we ended up on, on top and in a great position going into our second year. DC Virgo is a three-year mission. First was to build a strong foundation. We had to reopen a school, and that's not an easy thing to do. We also had to build the trust back to the north side, and, and we were able to do that in a short amount of time. Um, second year has had great challenges in and of itself. We have doubled our school population. This year, our students enrolled right now, we're up to about 225 students. Mm. But what was interesting, when we, we looked at our students coming in, it wasn't only neighborhood students. We had a lot of students from all over the county that are really interested in what we're doing and wanted to be a part of, of, of DC Virgo. So that's very promising uh, for us and, 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 and for the school as a whole. We've done a lot this first year. The first was build a strong community and family support. The second was establishing meaningful and sustained corporate and community relationships. We have had, we have had strong success from PPD, UNCW, and a lot of community uh, agencies in the area, and they have given us un, 
just a great support in uh, the, for the first year. Um, students showed promising growth on their MAP test, and MAP is measures for academic performance. So we didn't have EUGs to go on this year. We're waiting for those EUGs to come back, knowing that it's going to be a baseline. Also knowing that a majority of our students came to us a few grade levels behind. So we have a lot of work to do catching them up. But I feel confident by the time they enter high school, by the time they get to Hanover and Laney, they're going to be ready for success. Uh, we've also had one of the highest attendance rates in the county for any school. Uh, coming from DC Virgo, I know we're small, but showing that attendance really shows that our parents care. Our, they're walking our kids to school from our, our, our walking kids. 35% of our kids do walk to school. So that's impressive in and of itself. And also, we fully integrated a one-to-one -one iPad. So every one of our kids has an iPad, uh, and that's used in every single class by teachers and by students. So our mission, create a cool, uh, school culture of high academic and social expectations, comprehensive arts and enrichment program, and community, community and corporate partnerships. We want to provide a holistic, holistic education for our students. Current numbers right now, we're looking at about 225 students enrolled. You'll see that actually right now, our sixth grade is bigger than our seventh grade. So we have done a great job at recruiting our students, and, and, and the parents in the community are really supportive of what's going on. Our map data shows that we've showed steady growth with our students. And we need to show growth before we can show proficiency. And our ultimate goal is to provide students with the best education so they're ready to perform at the high school level. And we're well on our way. This year, I was able to put together an even stronger staff than last year. Uh, we've diversified our staff. And we've added not only quality educators, but also an instructional coach this year. Um, and Sabrina Hillblack over at Williston uh, was Teacher of the Year last year. We were able to bring her over as the instructional coach to really bolster our instruction. And I'm going to uh, introduce uh, Frankie Pollock, Jr. He is my assistant principal this year. So we're welcoming him back to the county. Stand up. <laughs> over the summer, we were also able to take, uh, take advantage of a lot of the Title I supplemental programs. Uh, Title I schools are offered the opportunity to participate in Fast Start which is a program during the summer to give some of at-risk students the chance to uh, get some extra exposure to math and reading before they start. It was our goal to invite all of our students. And we tried to get as many as we could, but we ended up with over 50% of our students participating in a voluntary Fast Start program over the summer. And that 50% is huge, considering that they have to walk by the pool to get to DC <laughs> Bird. That, that was just exciting to me. So. Um, and, and really this year we're focusing on college options. Students now in middle school need to be focusing on being ready to go to college. So our whole focus this year and next year is setting goals. How am I going to get to college? And it starts in middle school. What I'm really excited about is our comprehensive enrichment program. Not only do our students get the opportunity to participate in all the electives that other middle schools do, they also get the choice of 26 different enrichment opportunities on Fridays that Whatever they're interested in, we have yoga, taekwondo, baking, ceramics, you name it, we have it at DC Virgo. And it's just a chance for students to become interested or explore opportunities that they wouldn't normally get. Um, we also have um, a lot of participation in our band program. We have a huge band. Over 50% of our kids are in band and orchestra. That's a lot. Um, we also have an elective and enrichment uh, menu that's expanded this year to include computer technical education and also art. Our partnerships have really what has made it happen for us this year. And it goes along with the New Hanover County strategic plan. You want to build those community and corporate partnerships to help schools. Um, our big three are the Blue Ribbon Commission, which as I presented last year, um, is our safety net. They look at our students and they help us uh, find any nonprofit organizations, anything our students need to be successful in the classroom, they help us find. They broker the bridge between the school and some of the, um, some of the nonprofits in the area, and they've done an amazing job. Also, PPD, they've been an incredible partner. They've given us money for professional development. They've also provided all of our students with uniforms for two years in a row now. And um, Meg has been a great, uh, she, she works for PBD, she's been a great partner and she realized that to open a new school, the school also needs to look fresh and look new. So uh, they were able to contract and they painted our entire building for us on the outside and got rid of all the blue and now it's gray and purple and school color. So uh, we appreciate all their support. UNCW is vital. They're the 
you know, they're the biggest university here and we need them in our schools. They need to see what's going on. Last year, two classes were offered on our campus from UNCW. It was one of their, their immersion programs. They were able to work with our students, work with our teachers, and build a lasting relationship that we still see today. We have plenty of other partners. It takes a village to raise a child, and it takes a village to raise a school, and get the school to where it needs to be. These are just some of our partners, and you have that in your, uh, you have that in your handout. The Junior League. Um, Lowe's Toolbox Grants, UNCW, and especially the, the Black Student Union at UNCW has been instrumental in providing mentoring opportunities for all of our students. That has allowed us to have and log over 5,600 hours of volunteer service last year. That's about 700 days, school days. 36 of those have been parents, full-time volunteer parents. 40 have been community members, and the rest have been UNCW students or business partners. Our parents are continuing to support the school as well. Recent survey shows our parents have a, just a vested interest, especially my parents coming from the north side of the, from Wilmington. They really want this school to succeed. They're supporting us. They're helping us. They're giving us phone calls if they see students going astray walking home. They want DC Virgo to be the DC Virgo of old and be a, 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 just a huge partner in the north side. Um, so return on investment. Where did we end up? You have a middle school aligned with the vision of New Hanover County Schools. You have a school focused on not only academic, but social and creative uh, emotional needs of all of our students. We meet our students where they are. We have a, a huge enrollment of AIG students this year. That's new for us this year. So now we're able to meet the kids at the top, meet the kids in the bottom, and serve the whole spectrum of, of the, our student body. We're excited about that. It's also had a renewed hope for the north side. If you've been to the north side lately, there's a, it, it's becoming rejuvenated. People are talking. And that's because of the support of reopening DC Virgo. And also, I really want DC Virgo prep to be on the leading edge of urban reform, um, not only for this county, but for the state as well. Uh, we have two crews coming from uh, the uh, central, uh, central office, Office of Charter Schools, coming out to see what we're doing, to see how we've taken a urban school model and made it in a charter school, some of the best practices from successful charter schools, and made it happen in a public school. So they're gonna be coming out this December to take a look at some of the exciting things we're doing. Going into the future, we want to create and sustain our academic progress. That's our number one concern right now. We also want to partner <clears> with <throat> early colleges. Early colleges are going to be the key to some of our students becoming successful, not only in high school, but getting that extra step in some of the successful early college programs we have going on right now. And we want to continue to provide those enrichments. As our school gets bigger, it gets, it gets harder and harder to recruit enrichment partners for our school. But we're going to continue that, and that's going to be the cornerstone of us moving into the future. And also, we just want to be that flagship for not only New Hanover County, but for the state as well. So do you have any questions for us? Thank you very much. We'll open it up for questions. Any board members have questions? For One thing he didn't talk about, mm -hmm. a lot of his kids came with a serious discipline history from their elementary school. While, while they were in middle school and they acted like middle school kids, the discipline referrals for some of those kids went from being uh, a thick folder down, dropping considerably over the course of the year. And, I mean, he has the longest school day of any school in the district, but yet had the highest attendance rate. And for those that might not be familiar, why don't you tell us about your typical school day that the other schools do not have? Mm -hmm. Last year we went an additional hour. We went from uh, 8.30 until 4.30. Um, this year, because we, offer, we are offering sports uh, this year, so we, we go from 8 to 3.30. That additional, time of, that additional chunk of instructional time allows us some flexibility in the day to meet the individual needs of our students throughout the day. I want to uh, take the opportunity to congratulate you. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm, I know this board took a lot of heat mm -hmm. when we closed D.C. Virgo and <clears throat> then planned the reopening of the preparatory academy and all. <clears throat> but I want to congratulate you on what you've accomplished so far. And I'm especially interested in what you talked about with the enrichment because uh, I know the studies show that 
students, you talk about the early colleges, mm -hmm. that student success quite often comes where students have both social and cultural, what they call social and cultural capital. Mm -hmm. And the problem quite often is that students from areas like the North Side do not get an opportunity to get that enrichment that students from the rest of the county might have. So I, I want to uh, commend you for what you are doing to help develop and build that, that uh, social and uh, cultural capital within your students. Thank you, sir. Two of the most fun <clears throat> nights last year were the Christmas show and then the spring concert in the auditorium there. That's an auditorium that was literally standing room only at both of those events. And that was a real, a lot of that work was done during the cultural arts periods. The Dreams folks from downtown were a great partner in terms of doing that, as well as uh, instruments that were donated uh, by the pawn shop. Another group, they just got a second donation last Friday, right? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, National Pawn, um, through, through some social connections, was able to uh, last year donate 100 instruments to uh, DC Virgo to get us off the ground. Um, this year, uh, Bob Moulton and, and National Pawn is gener generous enough to give us uh, a second donation of instruments. So not only are 50% of my students participating in band or orchestra, not one of them has to rent an instrument, which you know can be a financial barrier to some of, uh, some of my families. Good. Good. And I do extend an open invitation for any of the board members. Come on out and, and, and see the good things we're doing out there. So. Any other questions? Yeah, very proud. Well, we're very proud of what is taking place over there. And like Mr. Higgins said, that. Uh, there were some tough decisions that the board made several years ago, but we have followed through and we have done exactly what we said we were going to do, and it's been very successful. And we appreciate all the hard work that, that everybody's putting forth and the success that you are having. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, folks. Before everybody gets gone, Ms. Greenwood, just one question from Forest Hills. I have to ask this. I see blue, I see green, and I, I don't know, I can't tell dark colors. Is that navy or black? But is there a difference in the colors? Is, I mean, principal gets blue, and I mean, are we, do we have a ranking? Is there a rank? Pardon? Tell us about your eyes. It's Forest Hills, but we appreciate our Very good, I, I, but I had to ask that. Thank you, thank, thank you once you again so for y'all being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They'll take your ear deep, man. The research says those kids will tell you in the room. Next item on the agenda, item nine, uh, consensus items. Item A, personnel, appendix F, Dr. Wilmers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We recommend the board approve the matters as presented. Move Sunday. for approval. Second. Any comments, questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It's approved. Item B, budget amendments, uh, state public school fund amendment number one, general fund budget amendment number two, capital outlay fund budget amendment number one, other restricted revenue fund budget amendment number two, enterprise fund amendment number one, appendix G, Mary Hazel Small, and you might want to explain some of those, Ms. Small, if necessary. Thank you. I just wanted to point out that the major changes in state um, and general fund were due to the changes in the state budget. Um, we discussed those a little bit at your last work session, but um, the, the reduction in the state budget and then a offsetting um, general fund appropriation um, to, to sort of help us transition from um, our, our current level of funding to the, the future funding from the state. We already committed teachers and assistants, and so we wanted to, to be able to move forward for the rest of the year at that same level. Okay, any comments or questions on the, the budget amendments? Move for approval. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any other comments or questions? Yeah, I, I just would like a clarification. I mean, you know, I, I see in the news there's this ongoing debate about whether or not the General Assembly did or did not cut funding for education. And uh, I know uh, several of our legislators say, 
I don't know what you're talking about. We increased it 5%, and yet I hear from Ms. Small that uh, it was cut. Uh, I, I, I would just like to kind of get a clarification of is it that it was cut in places but raised in others or? Well, part of their, their incre increased cost with the um, fringe benefit increases. Right. So part of the dollars went up, but they didn't go as far because you were you kind of buy more um, less, you know, with more dollars because the um, retirement um, contribution increased significantly, as well as the um, there was just a slight increase in health care for this year. Um, the other biggest impact for us is that they did not fully fund growth. So where we had a significant number of increased students, maybe the dollar amount stayed relatively the same, um, but we had more students to serve, and so. Um, the, the resulting formulas decreased in terms of the number of f for class size for instance for teachers with the new state formulas um, we lost a significant number of positions um, well that's because they raised class size yes they they did I say yeah, they increased they, 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 they increased um, the per pu teacher per pupil amount um, and so, um, so it went so up are we getting less money this year than we got last year not the main reason we got less money was a combination of um, increased enrollment in NCVPS and um, because they, they sort of so, corralled so that a little bit. So what I understand you're saying is what we're getting per, we may be getting more dollars, gross dollars, but the amount of dollars per student ha is not. Right, it's going down. Okay. And, and we also got a little bit less in gross dollars because of our increased, um, excuse me, because our they did not um, fully fund our enrollment and that we had a, a 350 student estimated increase in our charter school enrollment that they took money away they took like 1.3 million dollars away just about three weeks ago right before your last board, board work session but our actual enrollment is actually above projections right so and it is possible we'll get some of that back that's what i started but to we say we don't know yet for, that, for that, another that comes days. after the 10th day right it comes after the 10th day depending on what happens statewide so if enrollment goes up everywhere then there's not enough any more money to allocate but if enrollment well, is down maybe other places somebody ought to talk here, to the legislature agree. while they're back in session now about uh, coming up with a few extra bucks okay but if you I need more details you know i, I can get no that i, I you, just i mean I, I i hear like i said i hear our local state legislators saying i don't know what you're talking about we increased the amount of money by five percent i think it's the number he's used or they've used and then we talk about we don't get as much and i'm just trying to understand is it that we're not getting as much gross money or we're just not getting as much per student if, if our enrollment had stayed exactly the same um then we would have gotten slightly more okay that's okay thank you ma'am and how did that impact the teacher assistance because that's one thing that i know on the elementary level weren't the class sizes in some areas reduced um, no not this year for the not this year they held they held the class sizes at the lower grades but increased the class sizes at all the upper grades right they, they actually um for f adjusted the funding formulas um but then they held the class size requirement so if you had a we, we were lucky to have some local positions but if we did not have additional local positions other counties um or, or funding to appropriate local money they have less teacher allocations but then they have they're going to have to cut more in upper grades if that makes sense so the mm -hmm. the number of k-3 teachers went down but the class size stayed the requirement stayed the same um, i think that was just a mistake you know in the final version of the law because the first um first we heard that, that the um, class size maximums would also go up but then they they realized that they had not made that change so that will probably be corrected next year we don't know for sure. But what you're saying is that there was an increased cost, um, and and part of that was health care premiums. Mostly it was retirement. I think health care may go up next year. And retirement. The yeah, there are certain fixed costs that went up. But enrollment was not fully funded across the state, and so they they um, adjusted funding formula. So the amount per pupil is going down where the the dollar amount stays relatively the same but I can send you any details you want related to the new state formulas versus the old state formulas and there was also a lot of flexibility that we had when we had the discretionary reduction which is still continued in that so for example we lost 22 teacher assistants and um, 
I think 50 some teachers that we're asking you to pick up locally but if we were purely going by the state the new state formulas we would have lost 90 teachers but we have flexibility to use some of that money you know the way we have in the past so we were going to continue that you know until the board met about and that was due to the change in the funding formula or the, the class size that yeah the class size you know they, they're giving you where for example um, it used to be um, I don't know, one to 24 in ninth mm -hmm. grade, it'll now be one to 26 in ninth grade. Okay. Um, so I think high schools went up by two, um, and some of the other grades went up by one. Now, at the high school level, can they have a waiver for that class size? There is no class size requirement above grade three. You can uh, have as many, from a state perspective, you can have as many students as you want. Yeah, they only use that number now to allocate, te allocate your teaching positions. So you, they give you the positions based on their formulas, and then there's a fixed cap at, at the lower grades, but after that, there's no requirement that you stick to the formula allotment. But so for K-3, they increased class size by one in terms of how many mm -hmm. teachers they gave, but they did not increase the class size maximum. So that's going to make it tighter, you know, in a lot of schools. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? <clears throat> I believe we have a motion and a second. Any other comments, questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Passes. Item C, change of school assignments, Appendix H, Dr. Holliday. This is a routine request for change in, school assign change in school assignments to different counties and release to different counties because their parents are employed by those counties listed. So I recommend um, approval. Move for approval. Second. Comments, questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Thank you. Item 10, under old business, item A, policies on for a second reading. Mrs. Nichols. We have two departments represented tonight. So the first policy, 4228, comes from technology. So if you have any questions, Mrs. Brunson would be uh, able to answer them. If not, I ask that we okay. approve this. Okay, we'll just do these one at a time, is it? Uh, yes, because this is from technology and the others are from operations. Uh, we have, is there a motion to approve policy 4228? Go ahead and yours a motion. Was yours a motion? Oh, okay. Go ahead and yours a motion. Yes. Okay, and Ms. Kavanaugh will take yours second. as a second. Any comments or questions on 4228? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It's approved. And the next set uh, is from operations, and Mr. Hans would be able to answer any questions that you might have. Move for approval. Second. Okay. But now, which which one are you we, when you said the next the set? The rest of them. The rest of them. Or okay. operations. All from so operations. I we uh, could do them all in one. New okay. policy. Do you want me to read all of no, them? No, no, that's okay. As <laughs> if everybody understands that we're voting on all of them. Uh, uh, let me, yeah, I, I do have a, a very quick question. I understand it's got an operations, uh, uh, you know, 4425, I guess, is operation. But, you know, personally owned, use of personally owned devices. No, that, it, that was technology. Well he, said, well, he said 4228. That's the reason I was wondering if that included 40, uh, 40, 4425. 40, 40, 45, yeah. Okay, well, his when he read it he said we approved 44 42 28 that's what was confusing the me oh, yeah okay. oh and he, oh I'm i thought sorry. that's what we were the okay first i'm one. sorry i i thought 44 25 was the no okay i'm that's sorry child nutrition i'm sorry excuse me yeah excuse me that's why i wanted to read the 42 20 so would make sure we understood okay so that clears that up. The 4228 now, the 4225 and on down is what we're approving, correct? Any other yes. comments or questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? They are approved. Um, item B uh, under section 10 was a resolution regarding the impl implementation of uh, common core standards um, that has my name on it at the, at the last meeting. If I can bring this up. Uh, we discussed this uh, at our work session. Uh, we discussed a, a and I think kind of came to an agreement uh, of a draft resolution. 
Um, we have it on the agenda tonight to approve this. Uh, so I'll just move any, for approval. Second. Any comments, questions? The, uh, we, yeah, I have a comment or question as well. When we made the changes at the work session, so this doesn't follow the draft that was given to us. So how do we, how are we singled out for our objections or our questions? To what now? How, how is if this is going back to the group that asked us to... No, it's just good to saying it. Pardon? This isn't going back. We didn't do this at behest of anyone, I don't think. But but it, his intent is for us to, re <coughs> to send this back to the organization that asked you to present it? No. Uh, it came up at a meeting that I attended that, where there was a discussion of Common Core and there were some suggestions given. But no, well, uh, my intent in doing this was to send it to various individuals starting with the lieutenant governor on down as to uh, oh, okay. concerns oh, okay. have been expressed about common okay. core. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. Then that, that's fine. Yeah. Any other comments? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? It is approved. Uh, <coughs> Can we take a brief break? Yeah, it's just we've mind. been asked to take a break at this time before we get into our new business. So at this time we'll take how, how a... Much, how much new business going to take? I mean, I, well, it won't take long, but uh, but we've been asked to take a short break, so let's take a short five-minute break. Mm -hmm. 